Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a great day so far and welcome to today's video, which is going to be a good old will I buy it slash you don't need that mashup. I'm gonna be sharing my thoughts on all of these brand new and upcoming makeup releases, whether I plan to purchase them or not, as well as telling you why you don't need any of them. We're going for a two for one, buy one, get one free today. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so first up, one of the most exciting releases for me, at least, is these new YSL Love Shine lipsticks. I absolutely love Shine. <laughs> I love Yves Saint Laurent lipsticks. I have a lot of them. The candy glazes are probably my favorites, but literally anything with a YSL name on it in lipstick form is usually an absolute banger. They do great lip formulas, especially these shinier finish lipsticks. That's really their specialty. I feel like they're so good at doing them. So anytime I see that kind of lipstick coming from Yves Saint Laurent, I am very excited and this is no different. I will absolutely get my mitts on several of these. Apparently these are reinventing their Rouge Volupte Shine lipsticks, which alarms me because I love those. I really, really like them very, very much. So I'm nervous. I will let you know if these are as good. I've seen a lot of reformulations not work out in recent years. It seems like reformulation has become a worsening of the products. Literally how many times have we seen reformulations destroy <laughs> a much loved and treasured product? I'm really praying this isn't going to be one of those times. Please wait for a view before you run out and buy these because there's always that chance in a reformulation that things have gone very severely downhill. Let's hope and pray this isn't one of those times. They seem to have some gorgeous shades here. Lots of nudes, <laughs> lots of peachy shades. I'm all in. I cannot wait to try these. Even the packaging looks glorious as it always is with YSL. If you are trying to cut back on makeup spending, this is a very easy you don't need that because it's lipstick, okay? Any lipstick is a you don't need that because we've got 400 of them each per person, okay? You definitely already have lipsticks. I know you have. I know you've got dozens, okay, in every single shade. And if you're like me and you're drawn to specific tones, I'm a peachy or nude kind of girl, you might be a pink or a browns or you might be a berry toned person. I don't know, you tell me. But I know for a fact, if you're a pink person or a berry person or a nudes person, you've got dozens of that tone. And I know you're looking at these and going, <laughs> you've got it already, okay? You don't need to run out and buy these. These are going to be their new permanent range of lipsticks. And I know we've got a little bit disenchanted because Yves Saint Laurent lipsticks have been going out of stock and they've become hard to get. So this is why, because these are coming. So don't panic by them. You've got drawers full, all right? Lipsticks are always a you don't need that, let's be honest. Speaking of lipsticks, let's talk about these new Westman Atelier Lip Suede Matte Lipsticks. These are $50. I don't even need to do the currency translation to know that's a lot of money. I know that's a lot of pounds. And my vague guess is that they're probably going to be at least 45 here because we always get slightly stiffed. It's never a straight currency exchange, is it? We always get a few extra pounds whacked on for no apparent reason. There's a lot of temptations in here. All this beautiful packaging with those hearts embossed onto the bullet is glorious. Let me tell you, that's sucking me in. I don't even like matte lipsticks generally, but even I took one look at those bullets with all the little hearts and went, oh, <laughs> please, I need them. I will tell you straight up, I've skipped, I've passed on these. These are, these I noticed had arrived, maybe it was Harvey Nichols or wasn't Salvador's. They've arrived somewhere in the UK. I saw them. I saw them with my own eyes. And I said, no, I don't need those. Typically not my type of lipstick. You know, it's a matte formula. They're very, very expensive. And let's be honest, looking at these shades, looking at these swatches, look me in my eyes. I'm so sorry, I feel like I just swore at you. I meant to, you know what I was doing. Look me in my eyes is what I was trying to say, <laughs> not the other thing, although. <laughs> I'm sorry. Tell me you don't have these shades. Tell me there are lipsticks here that you're like, oh, I have never seen this shade of lipstick before. It's brand new information. No, it's not, <laughs> you fibbers. 
These are some really pretty shades. We've got reds, we've got a couple of nudes, we've got some pinks and like a couple of peaches and a coral shown thrown in there for good measure. Don't lie to me, don't lie to yourself. Never lie to yourself when it comes to lipstick shades. We know we've got them, we've already got them. They're wildly expensive. Can they possibly live up to that price point and give us something that we've never seen before that we don't already have? If we have Lisa Eldridge matte lipsticks, Pat McGrath matte lipsticks, Charlotte Tilbury matte lipsticks. We've got matte lipsticks coming out of our ears and our drawers everywhere. Matte lipsticks have been like the thing for years now. So we've gathered quite a collection. So you absolutely don't need to run out and buy these. Don't be fooled by the pretty hearts embossed on to the bullet. That's not a reason to buy a lipstick, okay? These are an easy wait for sale. Wait until it's easy. These are lipsticks. You definitely don't need to run out and buy them. You, I promise you, you've got some. And I'm not buying them either, so let's do it together. Next up, let's have a look at this new foundation from Urban Decay. So this is the Face Bond Waterproof Liquid Foundation. That name makes like the shackles stand up on the back of my neck. I don't know about you, but Face Bond? I don't want a foundation bonding with my face. That sounds painful. No, thank you. Um, it alarms me. So immediately I'm thinking that's not for me. And then it continues three in one combining foundation, serum and setting powder. All of this sounds like a terrible idea to me. I usually see the word serum when it comes to makeup and it's immediately a pass. It just conjures up like oily, slicky slip off my face feeling rightly or wrongly that's just how I feel about that word if I see serum foundation I'm usually out and then setting powder I don't use setting powder other than under my eyes I never set my whole face so the fact that that's in there as well that sounds like a negative for me and then here's the real buzz kill it includes a patent pending precision dropper Mm, urban decay they didn't get the memo that we don't want those we want pumps and i'm just already i'm looking at this bottle and this is what i'm envisioning that when i want to use this i'm going to have to break several fingers to get it out I, who wants a precision dropper for foundation we're not precision dotting it on our skin we want a load to come out that we can blend like normal human people okay we're not precision type of people we don't want to will be there all day that's conjuring up you know a lot of work for me and I'm like a whack it on vaguely in the right areas and go kind of girl so a lot of this sounds like it's not going to be for me it's got to be for a certain kind of person okay because it's a lot of buzzwords that for me are a horror show but for the next person possibly someone with really oily skin or who lives in a very difficult climate somewhere very hot and humid where foundation has a hard time or someone who maybe lives in a very rainy climate because it's also apparently waterproof sweat proof resistant to smudging and transferring it sounds like it's never going to leave my face and for me that's a bad thing but for the next person with a different set of circumstances that could be a phenomenal thing so I definitely feel like this is one that's not for me but it could definitely be for you depending on your skin type where you live and the type of environment and days that you'll go if you're going swimming with a full face of makeup this sounds perfect frankly but I don't usually typically do that in my day-to-day -day life, not on purpose anyway. So for me, that's an easy pass. If you are on a no buy or a low buy, it's a permanent foundation. You don't need to run out and buy this. You don't need to go into debt or put this on a Klarna or use your credit card. It's a permanent foundation. Go and get a sample, see if you like it and let me know. Next up, we've got the first collection from MAC in a few years now, full big collection of a lot of stuff that really is tickling my pickle, let me tell you. Now, a lot of this is like existing products in like limited edition packaging. So we've got their mascara. I'm actually wearing it today by coincidence. I love it. I love their mascara. It looks like we've got their prep and prime lip product, a fix plus in a fancy bottle by the looks of things and some lip products. I mean, this packaging is gorgeous. I really like this. It's really, really pretty. I love the colors of it all. What's interesting me about this collection specifically are these little face palettes. So these are apparently eye and face palettes 
I think the, the quad, the smaller pans are eye products that potentially could be used on the cheeks as well. And then the larger section, the larger pan is said to be a blush, which confuses me because I don't know who this is going to be a blush for because all of the variations look very light. So I feel like they're, are they not highlighters as opposed to blushes? If these are blushes, I'd be all in. MAC makes some of my favorite blushes. I love MAC's blush formula. I'm liking the direction that we're going in. I feel like MAC really are coming back into their heyday this year. I think this is going to continue. I definitely like to try those eye and cheek palettes. So yeah, I'm definitely interested in those. I'll keep you posted on how I do, how I'm going. But let's be honest, if you're trying to save money, this is not a necessary need must have, is it? Let's be honest. It's like four eyeshadows and they all look pretty we have them, we've seen them before. I'm not seeing anything revolutionary here. So yeah, I don't think this is gonna wow or knock your socks off. You can probably live without it. I think we all can, but I'll let you know if anything changes because I'd like to give Mac some chances to come back to where they were because I'm very nostalgic when it comes to Mac. That's kind of where like my love of makeup started. You know, saving up your money to go and get a MAC lipstick and then saving up your empty bullets to get a free single eyeshadow. Back in the day, I just saw a spider on my wall. Is that a spider? I think it's just a hair. I thought it was a leg, so let's move on. Next up, Tarte have released an XL version of their tubing mascara. This promises 24 hours of flake-free, smudge-proof-ness time with lengthening tubes that wrap lashes for XL length lift and lash love. It also has some lash caring ingredients in there. I feel like that's such a trend, isn't it? At the moment for makeup to have like, especially for like mascaras to have lash serum ingredients in there as well. I'm not really sure how well that works, but I'm here for it. And it also claims as per any tubing mascara to be very easy to remove with just warm water. I get a lot of questions about tubing mascaras. I have, I don't know that I've tried many, if I'm honest with you. I don't even know that I realized tubing mascaras were a thing. They're very rarely actually sold as a tubing mascara. It's kind of like a subtle thing that you find out when you're using it. I couldn't tell you the last time I tried or used a tubing. I couldn't tell you the last time or the last mascara I used that was a tubing mascara. They seem to be quite few and far between, but I've had so many of you guys ask me, what's my favorite tubing mascara? Can I talk about some really great tubing mascaras? And I just don't even know that, that I have ever tried very many. So I'm definitely gonna try this one because the original Tartlet mascara is one that's been on my list to try. A lot of you guys have told me that you love it and asked me to try it. And I know that a lot of you are on the hunt for tubing mascaras. I think the reason people really love them correct me if I'm wrong, is if you really struggle with mascara smudging and transferring, these are supposed to be much better. Am I right? Is that why you love them? Tell me. Or is it the easy removal process? Let me know what tubing mascaras are all about, why we love them so much. I definitely want to try this one. Early reviews have kind of said it's basically the same as the original one, but I haven't tried that either. I'm definitely going to give this a try and I will let you know how I get on. But tell me, tubing mascara lovers, what do we love about it? What's the what's the hype? What's the catch? What what are we doing? What's happened? Next up, Dyson. Oh, those cheeky little monkeys. What are they up to? Now I have the Dyson Air app, okay, and I have it in the really boring copper, the original colour, and not I've had it for years, and not once have any of these oh new color varieties persuaded me that I need to buy a new one. It's literally, it's hundreds of pounds for a hair tool. I love it. I've grown to very much love my air app over the years and I wouldn't be without it. Do I need it in different colors? I don't know why I would. I don't know why I would need it in different colors. And up until now, I've never even, has it occurred to me, have I even been half a shred of tempted towards buying a second one because it's a different color. It's never happened until now. They finally 
tried to get me with the rose gold. They really have gone straight for my gizzards. They've gone straight for the gut. They're like, Charlotte, you haven't bought a second one yet. We see you and we're coming for you with the rose gold. I'm 100% sure that's the conversation that happened around the Dyson boardroom table. Oh, it's so beautiful. This is the colour that was going to get me. I don't really want a really, as much as I love purple and pink, I don't think I want a really loud garish colour of air wrap. This is so pretty and feminine and soft and it looks, I'm just looking at mine on the wall right now and this one looks so much prettier and now they've got a few new attachments as well but I'm staying strong, I'm staying firm. When mine finally gives up the ghost and breaks and stops working and Dyson stop just replacing the parts for me, whenever that may be, then I will buy a new beautiful pretty colour. Until then, it's ridiculous to do so, isn't it? If you have been waiting for years to buy a Dyson, then now is the time because this is, I think, the best colour we're ever going to see and lucky you that you waited, but I just can't do it. I can't buy a second one because it's a different colour. But this is the best colour I've ever seen and it's the closest I've ever come to buying a second one because it's a different colour. Because that's ridiculous. I won't do it. Next up, let's talk about Makeup by Mario's new-ish Master Matte's The Neutrals Eyeshadow Palette. I feel like there's only one shade in here that is different to what is in the original Master Matte's and that's that sort of steely bluey grey shade i feel like other than that this could be the same palette that i already own i that's the only one that really is that much different and i get where he's going with it these are all neutral eyeshadows ish but a lot of it looks quite warm and when you hold it up against the original master mats obviously the original looks much warmer and this one looks much cooler slash neutral it's just so unnecessary, isn't it? We've got all of these shadows in the multiple other palettes that we have. And this being mattes as well, you know, there's no shimmers in here. This is basically a palette of neutral mattes. You know, if you already have Bieber, if you already have Natasha Denona's I Need a Nude, or, you know, all of these many, many neutral palettes that have come out over the last three or four years and also have matte options and shimmer options in there as well. This is wildly unnecessary. I'm definitely passing on this. I don't think anybody needs this, to be honest. I think we can all do without it and let's make a pact. Let's make a pact that we can all do without it. It's completely unnecessary. This is not the sort of eyeshadow palette that screams to me. I do like a neutral palette and I do like the odd all matte palette as well but at this point I have a lot of them already this is just an unnecessary addition for me so yeah don't go crazy don't go nuts for this because I feel like it's just going to be unnecessary to most people's collections. Next up let's talk about this Super Goop Daily Skin Tint with SPF 50. I got quite excited about this this is the sort of product that I really like in summer when the sun has got his hat on. Hip, 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 hooray. You know, I like a lot of SPF. I like to have a bit of a skin tint or something just to even up my skin tone and to match my bod to my face and everything to look like one human person. So this is the sort of product that I really lean towards. Very easy to reapply. You don't have to do too much other makeup, just a little bit of this to wake up the face and it's also got that extra bonus of their SPF 50 in there. Although I suspect we still really should be using a standalone SPF as well because you likely aren't going to use enough of this to get that full factor 50. So I would personally go in with at least an SPF underneath, but more is more when it comes to SPF. So I'm not mad about the SPF 50 and also it's going to be easy to add more of this, touch it up throughout the day. So I do like a lot about this. Unfortunately, I don't think this is going to be coming here. I've been reading their comments and there is big issues between SPF, between the US and Europe, certainly. We have completely different laws when it comes to SPF. That's why I think we have a lot of SPFs here that you can't get in the US or they're completely different formulas in the US versus the UK because there are different rules and regulations when it comes to SPFs. And I was reading through their comment section and they were very vague and really not confirming that it was going to be here. I think someone said, oh, please let this be 
come to the UK and they replied something along the lines of, we're really working hard for that to happen one day. It was, it didn't sound good is what I'm saying. I would 100% have picked this up if it was available here. I don't think it's going to be anytime soon, which is really, really sad. It sounds great. It's, it's described as a lightweight, effortless, cushiony skin tint meets powerful sun protection, light buildable coverage with a natural finish, hyaluronic acid. A lot of it sounds really, really great and I think I would have really loved it, but I can't get it. So I'll have to live vicariously through you. And for that reason, I hope it's rubbish. <laughs> no, I don't, that's, that's mean, I'm sorry. I take it back. But I do kind of hope that it's not great because I'll be sad, so. I have mixed emotions about it is what I'm saying. Moving on, we've got the first of the Tom Ford. I don't know if we're calling this a reformulation. I don't know what's happening, but we've got the first look at whatever Tom Ford are up to with their complexion products. This is the Tom Ford Architecture Soft Matte Blurring Foundation. Now I've had many people telling me and warning me that the Shade and Illuminate Foundation is being discontinued or certainly reformulated. We've already seen the Shade and Illuminate Primer that has now dropped. I really enjoy that. We are getting all kinds of rumors and all kinds of people saying all kinds of different things, but it seems like the Stick Foundation, maybe the Shade and Illuminate Foundation and this I would assume is replacing the soft matte foundation because why would you have two matte foundations from the same brand that seem to do the same thing and offer the same bonuses and offer the same thing. So I think we're seeing a sort of reformulation, a relaunching this year, step by step of the Tom Ford base products. Who knows what's gonna happen? I'm not overly worried about the Shade and Illuminate Foundation because I have like three full bottles in all different shades. So it'll be a, a long while before I run out. I don't know why they would discontinue it forever. It's such a popular product for them. I think there might be a reformulation though or a relaunching of it and that they're bound to have changed it slightly, which is nerve wracking, but We'll see how it goes. This one, however, is a liquid foundation that creates a soft three-dimensional effect on the entire face by blurring rather than covering up skin concerns. Lightweight liquid blends in seamlessly, creating a finely textured blurred look that doesn't clog pores. Contains fine particle powder to diffuse light and absorb sebum to maintain a freshly applied finish. So yeah, I'm not sure about this. I don't know if this is going to replace a soft matte. It doesn't really give a coverage level in there. So, but it also makes me feel like it's going to be a more natural coverage because it says that it's relying on blurring as opposed to coverage, but who really knows? I will definitely try this. I have never not loved a Tom Ford base products from their primers to their foundations. I've tried them all and loved them all. So I will always try a new Tom Ford base product. I would hold your horses on all of these new Tom Ford base products because again, it's one of these, we're re reformulating, we're relaunching, whatever we're doing, we're messing with stuff, okay? And as I said, often, more often than not, that goes south. That goes in one direction and it's not up, it's down. So I would definitely wait for a review, okay? They could also have changed the shades. That's something that happens quite often. You know, a new foundation comes out, you think, I know my shade, and then they've changed it against your will. So I would definitely wait for 300 reviews on any of these new products coming from Tom Ford because we just don't know what we're going to get or what direction this is going in, how they're changing it and why. I would definitely be waiting for a review. Mine will be coming because I'm always gonna try these products and let you know the tea before you go spending your money. Let me spend mine to help you save yours. That's the deal here. Next up, we have a new plumping lip gloss type of product from Huda Beauty. I feel like these products have been raining down upon us recently. This is like the thing. These new glossy plumping tinted lip products, we're getting them left, right and center at the moment. So these are Huda's answer to that trend and they are the faux filler lip glosses. These come in six shades plus one clear gloss and they look lovely. They look to have quite a bit more color than your average gloss. These are sort of reminding me more of like the hourglass phantom glossy balms with that amount of color, but they are more of a 
typical traditional gloss by the finish as opposed to like a, sh a really shiny lipstick I don't know about these I don't know they look quite I don't know if it's just the images that they've been posting that are really heavily applied but they just look quite thick and I have concerns about the sticky factor the plumping lip gloss claim just never really quite does it for me I get that you know maybe it, it gives your lips a juicier plumper appearance because they're shiny and hydrated looking and gloss makes everybody's lips look a bit juicier do i think my lips have actually grown in size i don't think that do you think that i'm not really a glossy girl i'll probably pass on these because i really love the hourglass phantom glossy balms i really love my dior addicts that give me that juicy plump looking lips with a lot of shine without any tingling or burning which i'm a big fan of so i don't know that i need these i know we've got lots of exciting lip products coming out i'd much i'm much more excited about the ysl love shines than i am these i just they're just more up my street so i think for me this is an easy pass it's just not the kind of product that i use that often and when i do i have plenty already other formulas the fenty ones i really like so yeah i just don't really need these and they're not exciting me that much Okay, and there you have it. Those are all of my thoughts on these new and upcoming makeup releases. Please, as always, let me know your thoughts on everything we've talked about today in the comment section down below. What are you excited for? What are you not touching with a barge pole? Are you interested in anything at all? Are you wanna know by? Let us know in the comment section down below. But thank you so much for watching. I would love to see you in the next one. Otherwise, take care for now. Bye-bye-bye-bye.